Dan Johnson here talking to Mark Holcomb at Sun and Fun about an engine that you, not about an engine that you've been working on, but some components for the engine that you've been working on since we interviewed you oh, a few years ago, maybe three years ago? Two, two years ago. Two years ago, ago. okay. Yes, and in that time, you talked about you were going to do what we're going to discuss here today, and now you've done it, and you are flying it. So tell me what I'm referring to here. I mean, I'll give the, the viewers an initial. This is a Jabiru engine up here. This is the 3300, which is the six-cylinder engine. Normally produces 120 horsepower. Makes this Lightning perform real well. But there's some new stuff right in this range right here. What am I talking about, Mark, and what did you do here? Well, we, um, I added a supercharger system to the uh, 3300. Uh, in particular, I was really looking for altitude performance for me. That's what, that, that was my interest. And so, uh, in order to achieve that, I needed a boosted intake. And so, I designed a mount and drive assembly to attach a Rotrex supercharger to the engine. And uh, as a result, the uh, the altitude performance has just been amazing so far. We've got about 25 hours. And, and tell me, put some put some values on that, what it did for you at altitude. So when I built the airplane and flew it normally aspirated, uh, 10,000 foot uh, uh, typical cruise speed was 143 miles per hour. Okay, 100, miles per hour. 100, 143, 144 miles per hour. Okay. Uh, with the supercharger at uh, 10,000 feet, uh, we're cruising at 174, oh, wow. 175. Wow, so miles you got like about hour. a 30, now is that miles an hour? Miles per okay, hour. Okay, so you got a 30 mile an hour boost by adding this to it. Uh, and that's at altitude. And so that, that's at 10,000 feet. So at, now, a lot of people know about the Rotax 914, which has a turbocharger on it. And they'll tell you, and everyone knows that it's five minutes and then you got to back off on that and yeah, of course you can use it to get to altitude you could use it at altitude but you got to time limit yourself is that the case of this uh, that's not the case with this particular implementation one of the, one of the things that's unique about this supercharger is that uh, there's a small computer that runs the basic it's basically a, a blow-off valve and the supercharger generates about 50 inches of manifold pressure oh, wow. at sea level, which is way more than the engine wants. Yes, right. So the blow-off valve is partially open at sea level. Is that and what's it's, sometimes called a wastegate? It, on a turbocharger, it's called a wastegate. Ah, okay. So on a supercharger is called a blow-off. So do do the simplest definition for me: difference of supercharger versus turbocharger. So a turbocharger uses exhaust gas pressure to spin a turbine, which then spins the compressor side that feeds the boosted air to the intake system. Okay. It uses the exhaust pressure to spin the supercharger, or to spin the, the, turbo the, the compressor. So the compressor on a turbo, this is all a turbocharger. Turbocharger. Okay, now a supercharger. On a supercharger, you use the, in this particular case, it's the crankshaft drives this pilot shaft and turns the belt drive and it's the so it's a hard mechanical connection hard mechanical okay. connection to the crankshaft and it spins the supercharger so so it takes horsepower to spin okay. Still the supercharger so okay. you, you use it you use a little bit of horsepower to spin the supercharger turbochargers are more efficient right? you, okay. you could have the argument all day about supercharged or turbocharged or but when I started this project to improve the altitude performance of my airplane, I really had to look at what skills was it going to take to do a turbocharger versus a supercharger. Okay. And one of the skills was welding, right? You had to be able to weld the exhaust system oh, and tune yeah. the exhaust okay. system. I see where you're going. My welding skills are... Uh, non-existent. It's kind of an art form to do good welding, I know that. My machining skills are pretty good. <laughs> so for me, 
a supercharged implementation fit my uh -huh. my skill set. That I see, and that was the primary driver for me. That's a great explanation. Let's just leave it at that because that really helps clarify. Um, all right, so I want to talk a little bit now, Mark, about so we got we got. Original, original, original Jabiru engine from here back to about here, and then things change. things change. And what I'm looking at looks like some kind of heavy stuff in here, but you said you didn't really have too bad a weight penalty for this. Tell me how that story unfolds. All right, so the mount, the drive assembly, the belts, the pulleys, the gears, the supercharger, the electrically controllable blow-off valve, uh, that part of the system weighs 22 pounds. 22. That's 22. less than I thought you were going to say, but you added 22 pounds. But I added. But that's not the end of the story. That's is it? not the end of the story. So I added 22 pounds. So on on the lightning here is the data for center of gravity. So this isn't really that far forward. I see. Okay. But it is a little bit forward. But the other thing I did was uh, I replaced the. Uh, Class AGM battery, which weighed 20 pounds, with a three pound EarthX wow, really? battery. And so I you ended saved up, 17 pounds just on that alone? I saved 17 pounds on changing the battery. Just the battery. Oh, wow. Just the battery. And then I added 22. So I, I ended up with about five net pounds in, in the engine. Yeah, that's but the, uh, the EarthX guys make matching battery so the the terminals are in exactly the same place ah, okay. they're exactly the same size and so uh, so it was an easy swap it, it took me 30 minutes to swap the battery out well, that wasn't bad at all yeah so the EarthX guys really do have a nice product so is this now that you've done this the, 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 this was something you did for mark originally yeah this but was, this it's not going to stop there i understand because you had when we walked up we had a we had to wait a few moments while some other guys were crawling all over this, and they said they had uh, lightnings, and they were very interested in this. Is this going to be a product? Uh, Geronimo Experimental Aircraft is uh, there. It's very likely that they're going to start once we get all the testing really complete. Yeah, you're 25 hours in. You could do some more of that first. We're, we're going to get some more hours in. Yeah. Uh, I'm building serial number two for uh, Jack. Norris at okay. Geronimo, and he has a lightning, so he's going to start flying his lightning with the supercharger, so that we can build more hours. Ah, and, I see. Uh, okay, then then you'll really be able to advance the game, all right? And so, uh, so and Geronimo, for those that don't know, is uh, uh, Greg Hobbs and Jack Norris, and they're down in uh, we'll, we'll call it uh, Tucson. It's near Tucson, and quite a facility. We've been there and looked at it and whatnot. But they help people build. Lightnings and other aircraft, um, but they will also then. So somebody who goes, well, I'd really like that, but you know, it took about all I could do just to get the airplane together. I'm not sure I'm up for that. They'll be glad to help with that too. Do I absolutely, understand? absolutely. Okay. I, they're going to make kits available, and I think they're they're also going to do installations. Perfect. And they have a very nice facility. I just mentioned that, but there's accommodations for people to stay there. Uh, you get meals. You get treated like family. It's a nice big facility. Uh, nicest people in the world, so it's a good place to go do that. It climb better? Originally, my my Lightning would climb at about a 1,100 feet per minute. Now they're still pretty spirited even uh, without this stuff. So, but uh, but now takeoff performance is around 1,350 okay. to 1,400. As soon as I get enough takeoff data where I can average. Sure, 100 sure. takeoffs and it, the number will really settle in. Sure, sure. But around 1350 to 1400 and at 10,000 feet at 100 indicated you're still climbing at 1000 feet per minute. <laughs> so what what have you added to the pilot's workload to add the supercharger? If anything, maybe nothing, I don't know. So the boost is controlled by a computer. Very small boost control computer so that the pilot only manages manifold pressure just like you would any other so constant speed prop. If you already know how to use a constant speed prop, you got enough knowledge to run this. And if you had a fixed pitch prop, you wouldn't even need manifold pressure. 
you just would work this a single single lever. Okay, so and it, and it can't work with fixed. So people that said, well, I don't want to mess with that, or I don't want to spend the money, or I don't have a credential, or whatever. Correct. They could do this and have a fix. Have a fix. And fix still product. gain and maybe not all the benefits, but many of them, I'm guessing. You probably you you would be trading it off, right? You would either keep the climb performance, see, or sure, you sure. keep the cruise performance, or you'd set it somewhere in the middle. Okay, so, so that's that's good. So really, single lever operation. Really, no pilot additional workload. You did say one thing though that I want to mention. Then we'll go to the website. You said you got to, you do need to watch the heat because this is going to add some extra heat to the engine. So in cruise, this is this is a Gen 4 3300. Okay. And so I, I in terms of actual temperature performance I can really only speak to the Gen 4 Jabiru's but I had a lot of uh, data collected and normally aspirated and now I have 25 hours of supercharged data collected in climb and takeoff the engine runs about 20 degrees F hotter okay. and in cruise Full power cruise, you know, full full boost cruise. Right, 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 right. It's about uh, it's about ten degrees F. Oh, okay. So in cruise, well, it's not really that much it's, then. it's not. I'm also running modest boost levels here, right? I, I'm I've been doing most of my testing at 34 inches of manifold pressure, okay. and it stays 34 inches up to 10,000. All right, very so, good. That's a lot of information. People that are keen on this sort of thing are going to want more. Where can we send them on the web so they can learn more about this? Consider installing it on there or lightning? So there's uh, GeronimoABC.com. Okay. Uh, All right, so GeronimoABC.com. That'll get us the information we need. Find lots more about the Lightning, more about Jabru, well, just a lot of stuff in the affordable aviation range on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Mark Halcombe and myself here at Sun and Fun about the supercharged Lightning. Thank you.